Okay, so when we're talking about expressions versus equations, you have to know the difference between the two. So an equation is something that has an equal sign. So this is an equation, this whole thing. It says that two things are equal. You did this when you were in grade one. One plus one equals two. That's an equation. The expression, it can be made up of letters, numbers, and operators, but it has no equal sign. So three times five, that's an expression. One times 15, that's an expression. If we've got two expressions on either side of an equal sign, they have to be the same. So three times five equals 15. One times five equals 15. So if you don't have this in your interactive math notebook, you're going to want to pause and put this in. Um, we talked about this early in the year. We talked about solving equations and we talked about a waterfall method. And we're gonna talk about it now by isolating a variable. And all that means is moving the letter onto one side of the equation. So the first thing you're gonna do is write down the equation. That means the entire thing. So that includes the equal sign and whatever's on the other side of it. Step two, move one number at a time to the other side. So here we've got six plus x equals 30. We wanna move that six to the other side. When we move that six to the other side, it becomes a negative because it was positive before. It had no negative sign in front of it, so because we're moving it, now it's positive, or sorry, now it's negative. And what I should have done here is one more step. Um, actually, no, sorry, I've got it. So 30 minus six, and then we've got x by itself. When you have the letter by itself, the variable by itself, and you only have one number left here, then you have solved the equation. So if there's no more numbers left on the other side, you can solve for x. So let's go through it and try one more time. So 18 equals 10 plus x minus two. Well, we know that we want to isolate this variable. It needs to be by itself. And the way we're gonna have that happen is to move things. So we copy down the, the whole thing first. Now we're gonna start by moving the two. When we move the two, it says minus two. When we move it over here, it becomes positive two. So we've got 18 plus two equals 10 plus x. So now we're gonna move the 10 over, 18 plus two minus 10. And it's a minus 10 because it's a positive over here. So now we're gonna slide it over and it is going to become a negative. So now we've got x all by itself and all our numbers on one side. Now that means we've isolated the variable. That means isolated just means on its own. And you should know this word, guys, because we're isolating right now. Everyone is social distancing. You are home isolation. We're isolating this X. Consider it under quarantine. Okay? Then when we move, put, start solving, we're going to solve one at a time. So 18 plus 2 is 20. And then now we solve the next part, 20 minus 10. And you'll remember when we talked about this with our patterns to algebra, um, we talked about a waterfall because gradually we're getting smaller and smaller as we get towards the bottom. And then we've got 10 equals X. So we've solved our equation. There's a number on this side and a letter on this side. Done. Now let's try one more. So if you were solving this one, you would want to isolate the variable and you would want to do that by moving the six over to the other side. You need to decide if it's positive or negative. If it's negative, it's going to have a minus sign in front of it. If it's positive, it could have a plus, but it might have nothing. In this case, this one has nothing. So when we move it over to the other side, it's going to become a minus. So now we've got 23 plus one minus six. Because remember, this was positive, now it's negative. So when we've got this, then we have to start solving. Remember, we solve one at a time. You may only solve one at a time. So now we've got 24 minus six. And now we've got 18 equals x. So now we know we've solved our equation because we are down to a number and a variable. And so we've isolated this variable.
Okay. Now, when we've got multiplication and division, it's going to work similarly, but maybe just a little bit different. So we're going to have our t here. You'll probably know already that we need to move this five times over to the other side. Um, the way we do that is we perform the op opposite operation. So because this is five times, now it's divided by five. So 30 divided by five equals t. So if this has a times in front of it, that means when I move it over, it's division. Now we've got six equals x, so we've isolated that number, and we've got the variable, so therefore we've solved the equation. Okay, you may not have seen this before. When we've got a number right beside a variable like this, what this means, it's as if they forgot to write something. They should have written, they should have put the x in here for multiplication. But we're going to assume that when there is no multiplication there, that that means multiply. 21r is 21 times r. So we need to solve by pulling it to the other side. And the way we do that is reversing the operation, so it's divided by. So 21 divided by 7, r equals, and then r equals 3. So I've got some practice equations here for you on the next one. I want you to practice your skills with these expressions. Copy them down and practice, then use the next slide to check if you were correct. Don't look at it, please. The only way you get better at this is by practice.